Hi everyone and welcome to another Vector Twist tutorial. In this week's video, I'm going to share with you my mesh tool tips. Illustrator's mesh tool is a bit tricky, but I'll share some of my tips I have gained about the mesh tool with you, and by the end of this video, you'll be able to create almost any hyperrealistic illustration. So let's get started. The best way to start with the mesh tool is to pick an object that won't drive you crazy. So for this example, I picked a photo of a banana. So let me show you how we're going to start. First, we'll pick some of our swatches. So simply select the rectangle tool, create some squares on the side, and then choose the eyedropper tool and pick the most important colors from the banana image. Then I'm going to create a copy of it and sample some other colors. Now we're going to create the mesh shape. Now you can go about it either choosing the pen tool and then tracing the shape of the banana, or you can start with a rectangle tool. So for this example, I'm just going to choose a rectangle. So back to the rectangle tool, I'm picking the lightest color of the banana that we've chosen here from our swatches, and then create a rectangle approximately the length and height of the banana. After that, we're going to Object, and we're going to choose Create Gradient Mesh. Now this gives us a starting point with the mesh. Of course, you could choose the mesh tool here in the toolbar, but I often just create a rectangle and then create a simple gradient mesh and then manipulate it. So here in the pop-up for Create Gradient Mesh, we'll set the rows to 2 and the columns to 2. We'll leave the appearance as flat and then press OK. Now in order to see how to manipulate this shape, we'll move it over the banana image, we'll open up the transparency panel and bring the opacity down to maybe 65%. Now we can see the banana underneath and now we can manipulate the shape. To manipulate a gradient mesh shape, all we have to choose is the direct selection tool. And then we're going to click one of the corner anchor points and then manipulate it. So for this example, we want to drag it up to where the banana begins. You can see your handles on either side. Then you drag your other point, and then of course we're going to zoom in. As soon as you manipulate the anchor points, you often have to right away also manipulate the handles. All you have to do is grab them and then move them around. So this middle point we need to move more into the middle for the top part of the banana, and then we're going to zoom out, grab the bottom anchor point of our shape, and moving it up. Now of course everything seems to be skewed now, but as soon as we grab our handles, we can move the shape into place. Next, we're going to work with these three points here. So we'll grab it with the direct selection tool, move it to the bottom, the second one will follow, and then the third one. We'll highlight our anchor point in the left top corner here, grab the handle, and then move our shape into place along the banana. The same we're going to do with the middle one here. So as soon as you grab one of the anchor points in the mesh, you'll get your handles, and then you can grab those handles, and you can manipulate the handle path. We'll continue this with all of our other points until we have the shape we desire. So let's move over to the other side of the banana. We'll repeat the same step. I'm going to work a little bit faster. All we have to do is grab the anchor points, manipulate the handles to move our shape into place. We started with a rectangle and now it takes on the form of a banana. As you can see on the left side here, we still have to manipulate it a little bit more. But since we can do it by just grabbing the anchor point and then moving the handle around, we need to add more mesh points. So in order to do that, we highlight our shape, we go over into our toolbar, find the mesh tool, and then simply go over the shape. And as soon as you see a plus sign, anywhere you click now, we'll add a new mesh point. Since I want a mesh point approximately here, you can see that our banana is much thinner around this part here. We'll create a mesh point, we'll get new handles, and now we can manipulate it again. Now all we have to do is highlight the anchor point, and then manipulate the path again with our handles. This sometimes takes a little bit of practice, but as soon as you've tried it a few times, you really get the hang of it, and then you can manipulate the shape much better. So I'm going to tweak it a little bit here. Sometimes you have to zoom in and just see what's happening with the handles, and that's pretty much it. Now we've created the base shape for our banana. If you want it to be exact precise, you could add a few mesh points over here 
to create a little bit of an indent. But for this demonstration purpose here, I'm not going to do that. Next, what we want to do is pick the colors for our mesh points. But first, let's set the transparency back up to 100% and let's move the shape away from the banana so we can actually duplicate the colors. Now, before we add more colors, we need to create some more mesh lines. So simply select your shape, grab the mesh tool and add some lines. Now, how it works with the mesh and the color. You can color the mesh lines or the anchor points in different colors. And depending how many mesh lines you have, depends on how much the color will spread. So let me demonstrate this. I'm trying to recreate this darker line here on the banana. So I'm going to set a new mesh line here. Of course, everything is colored the same way now. Now, if I go in to select all of the anchor points on this mesh line, I'll select the first one, hold the shift key, and then select all the other points. Then I'm going to switch to my eyedropper tool and select the darker color here. Now this has been applied to this mesh line, but it doesn't give me a sharp line. It spreads out quite a lot. Each mesh point usually has four handles. Now we can grab the handles and move them very close to our point, but that doesn't really change anything. Then we can try the mesh point next to it. And then I grab the handle of the bottom lighter colored anchor point. I can move it towards my darker colored anchor point line. And you can see it pushes the color a little bit closer to it, but it still doesn't give us a sharp edge. So let me undo this. The easiest is to actually add another mesh point. So I select my shape. I want to highlight one of the mesh points with my color that I've applied to all of the mesh, grab the mesh tool, and then add closely to our darker mesh line here another mesh point. So as soon as you see the plus sign, just press on the line, and now you've added another mesh line. We'll do the same on top. Now let's zoom out. Now I do not want it to go all the way to the top. So in order to stop it from going all the way to the top of the banana, we'll need to select some of the anchor points. So we need this line here. So I grab the anchor point from the middle line, the one that is colored darker, and I probably have to zoom in here so I see it, and this one. I'll zoom out and then I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and select the color from our main banana shape. Now if I deselect and zoom out, you can see that our line stops approximately here. And this is a way how you can manipulate the mesh points and the colors, how far they spread and how to control what kind of sharp edges you are getting. Now in order to give a better definition of the bottom of the banana, we simply select all of those points switch to the eyedropper tool and then pick a color from the bottom of the banana here. If I deselect, you can see now we have a better shading of the banana. The same we're going to do for the top. So I'll select all of my anchor points. I can do this easily by holding the shift key and clicking on each. Switch to the eyedropper tool, select the color on the top. And now we're getting a much better definition of our banana. And then we're just going to continue to add mesh lines. Now I would like to add another mesh point in here. As soon as I click on the corner here, it will wrap it all the way around. If I click in the middle, it will also give me a perpendicular line. So it depends how many you want. Just to show you, if I click just in the middle, I'll get a perpendicular as well. If I just click on the outer part of the shape, it will go parallel along our first lines. And then I'm going to choose anchor points again, switch to the eyedropper tool, and sample the color from our banana. Since I don't want it to spread that much, all I have to do, pick one point with our original color and then simply add another mesh line. If the color is not taken, I'll just select all of my anchor points again and then switch back the colors. And this is how you can start shading your shape. I can also easily manipulate how the color falls by moving the anchor points. I'll just grab them with the direct selection tool and then move them up. And as you can see, our banana is really taking on some realistic look. And of course, you'll continue to do this. Simply select your shape, choose the mesh tool, and just be careful what color you have in the fill. If I just now add a mesh point to my shape, you can do this without selecting the shape, and you see the white color in your fill, you'll add a white point. Now, if you want to have a darker color in your fill, you can select it, switch to the mesh tool, and then add a mesh line. If you find you made a mistake and you want to remove a mesh point, you'll switch to the mesh tool. You can see the plus sign when you hover over any of the points, but nothing will happen when you go on top of a point. You can't add another point on top of another mesh point. 
but you can remove a point. Simply hold the Alt or Option key and then click on the point and you will have removed all of the mesh line. Here I'll show you again. I'll press the Alt or Option key and hold it. Click on the mesh point and the line has been removed. This works anywhere on the line. You don't have to be right on the mesh point. You can just be on the mesh line as well. Now if you wanted, for example, to create a dark spot like this here, you could use the mesh tool. You could also just use any shape tool, the pencil tool, the pen tool, or the ellipse tool and create a shape and fill it with a color. But I would like to show you how to use the mesh tool to do this. So with the direct selection tool, we'll find the current mesh point that has the darker color applied, then pick the mesh tool. And then I want to add three extra mesh points. So I'm going to create one here, one next to it, and then another one. The reason why I add three points, I want to color just a mesh point in the middle. I do not want this darker color to spread all along. So now I have created a little grid. I'm going to select the mesh point in the middle. I'll pick my eyedropper tool and then sample the color of the spot here on the banana. And as you can see, it just puts the spot right into the middle. It doesn't spread across. If I want to have it a little bit longer, I can just select it and then sample the color for my mesh point. And if I want it to be really tight together, I'll just manipulate those handles on this particular mesh point. Now if I find this is a little bit too dark, of course you can just select it again and sample from the mesh point next to it. And this is pretty much it. Now here let me show you a banana that I finished before. This is the finished mesh banana. If I switch to the outline view, you can see I've just worked with the mesh and then added some extra highlights. I'll see you next time.